Personal finance practice problem using Excel. Graphing bond price part number three. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, there's three sections we've been going through in prior presentations. Part one, part two, this presentation, part three, three tabs in part three, example tab, practice tab, blank tab, example, answer key. Let's look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're going to be looking at the bond price as time passes. As we get closer to maturity, we're going to be graphing that out, looking something like this. This is a great practice problem for graphing, understanding bonds, understanding time value of money. Also note that the bonds have two cash flow components to it. We've got the interest payments that are happening, which is an annuity kind of structure. And then we've got that a one lump sum that happens at the end when we get the face amount. So that could be a little bit confusing when we think about what's going to be the impact on the price as we get closer to maturity, because as we've seen in prior presentations, we broke this out first looking at a situation where we don't have any interest payments, but just that lump sum at the end and looking at the structure of the graph. In that case, as we get closer to maturity, you would think we would pay more because uh, we're, we're going to get that one lump sum payment at the end. And then in part two, we graphed an annuity situation, which is similar to a bond that doesn't have if it didn't have that lump sum at the end and just gave the annuity payments. And in that situation, we'd get a graph looking more like this, because as you get closer to the end of the annuity, you would think the annuity would be worth less because you don't have as much of a stream of payments from the annuity payments. And now... We're going to combine those together and basically graph it out, uh, graph those two things out together for a bond that has annuity payments and that lump sum at the end. Okay, so the second tab has some pre-formatted cells, so you can work through this practice problem with less Excel formatting if you so choose. The third tab, basically a blank tab with the information on the left. If you just want to open up a new Excel sheet, you can do that. And then I would select the whole sheet with a triangle, throw down your baseline formatting by right clicking on it. I would usually go to the format of the cells and then I typically go to currency, brackets, no dollar sign, no decimals. I'm not going to hit OK because I already have this. I'm just going to X out of it. Then put in your data, formatting cells as needed, such as the percents here and here. Make a skinny C column and then we're good to go. So we've got a bond here, face value, 1,000 years, 30 years. We're gonna say the rate is 10%. The discount rate is gonna be 9.5. So let's first calculate the bond price as our, as our typical, typical scenario, bond price. What would be the bond price given this information? Let's calculate the coupon payment down here. Coupon payment, just to get that uh, defined. That would be the 1,000 times the 10%. So we're going to be having a coupon payment, an annuity payment, $1,000 or $100. Okay, let's make this black and white up top. We're going to go to the home tab, font group, make this black and white with the bucket drop down and the letter thingy. There we have that. We're going to make this a little bit wider. And this is going to be the present value of the interest payments. We're calculating the bond price by taking the present value of the interest payments, which would be the annuity portion, $100 for 30 years. It's annual, not semi-annual, so a little bit easier that way. Negative present value, shift nine. Rate is gonna be the market rate, which we're gonna say is 9.5, comma. Number of periods is gonna be 30. There's no semi-annual, so it's straightforward 30, comma. The payment is gonna be that, what we calculated 1,000 times 10%, or just the 100 down here, down below, and okay. And then we've got the present value of the face amount that we're going to get at the end. Negative present value, shift nine, rate 9.5%, comma. Number of periods is going to be 30 years, comma. We don't have a payment because we're not talking annuity this time. We're going to the future value, that being the $1,000 and okay. And so, or enter, I enter is okay. And so that gives us the bond price. If we sum this up, we've done this calculation before. I know I'm doing it quickly because we've seen that before. We can kind of double check it by saying, let's make this 10%. You should get the same $1,000 when you do that. 
So there we got, we've got that. So let's put an underline here. Let's do some formatting action, selecting these items. Let's go to black and let's make this bordered, bordered and blue. If you don't have that blue, I'm gonna go to the color wheel, the wheel of color, it's a color wheel. Looks more like a honeycomb color wheel, but it's not all yellow like a honeycomb because honey's usually yellow. Anyways, so now we're gonna calculate. Let's do that same thing as let's make this a little smaller. Let's save some room. Let's save a little room here. Excel isn't endless for crying out loud. Let's let's select this one and go home and make a paint brush it, paint brush it, and put that on the F to make a skinny F, and we'll calculate that same bond price. Let's say year price for each year as we get closer to 30 years. So I'm going to start at zero, one, two. We're going to select those three and let's bring that on down for 30 years. 30 years have passed and still, and still you, you don't seem to, I'm still not doing too great here, but that's okay. We're going to, I'm still here. 30 years have passed and I'm still here. So I'll tell you that, that's good sign. Home tab, font group, we're gonna hit the black and white, and we're gonna make this one a little skinnier, like so. All right, let's calculate that one again, but in such a way that I can copy it down now for 30 years. So this is gonna be negative present value, shift nine. Let's pick up the rate, it's 9.5, that's outside of my table, so I gotta make it absolute F4 on the keyboard because I don't want it to move down when I copy it down. I only need a mixed reference, by the way, but an absolute one works and it's easier to do. So then we're gonna go to the number of periods. Number of periods is gonna be 30, but instead of picking up that 30, this is where the tricky business comes in. We're gonna take this 30 on down below, minus zero, up top which is still 30 but when i copy it down i want it to be 30 minus 1 or 29 30 minus 2 or 28 that means the 30 can't move even though it's in the same table can't move it but the other one i do want it to move down so the g32 representing the 30 needs to be absolute f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the g and the 32 so that it will not move down but the zero will move down to one making it 30 minus 1 or 29 okay so then comma the, the payment that we're going to have, the payment is going to be the $100. Now, we also have to add the second component to it. So we've got to have another item here. So I'm going to close up the brackets and I'm going to do the second calculation just right inside here in the same place. I'm going to start it with a negative again. So I'm going to say minus another negative because that flips the sign to a positive on both of these. So then I'm going to say present value shift nine. The rate is this time is going to be the 9.5% again, comma. The number of periods is going to, I'm going to do the same tricky business. It's going to be the 30 <clears throat> minus the zero, same kind of starting point. This needs to be absolute because I, that's the same 9.5 that's outside of my table. Therefore, F4 on the keyboard, F4. And then we're going to say this one, we need to do the same business that represents 30. This represents the 30. So therefore F4, because I don't want it to move down. And then when I, and then comma. So there's no payment on this one because we're only looking future value comma again to get to the future value of 1000. That's also outside of our table. Therefore, I need to make it F4 absolute dollar sign before the B and the two. So it don't move down when I copy down. Whew, that was long. Let's see if I did the right thing. I got to close up the brackets. That's okay. It's still good. So then we copy it. So that looks good. If I copy it down here, does it do what we think it should? It doesn't. Why? Because this 100 moved down. So I missed an absolute. I'm going to double click on it and say, where is that 100 right there? I believe because that's B9, B9. So I'm going to make that absolute F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the B and the nine, enter. Let's try it again. Ultra vez, por favor. And now it's copying it down uh, properly. I think it didn't change the number yet. So there, so now it's changing. Okay, I think that's right. So let's just review it one more time. We've got these two formulas together. So I said negative present value. So here we're taking the rate which is gonna be that 9.5, 
We took the 30, which didn't move because it's absolute, which is now minus the two, which is 28, which is the G4. And then we picked up the payment, which is 100. We closed up the brackets. We made another present value, calculating the face amount in the same formula. We took the rate, which is absolutized, the 9.5. We took the 30 minus the two again, the 30 represented by the G32, G4 representing the two. We didn't have a payment this time. We got the future value of the 1000 absolutized. And there we go. So now we can copy it down and we can see that we have this change and you've got these two kind of remember you got these two kind of forces happening when you go down one is that as we get closer to that imbalance here as we saw here when we get closer to that lump sum you would think that the price would go up because the lump sum payment we're going to get at the end would be more valuable but also we've got the annuity component the fact that basically when we if we just had an annuity payment the series of payments would be less as we get closer to maturity so you'd think that would basically drop drop the price notice as you're further away from that in lump sum payment it's it's not worth as much it's not as as big of an impact and and so so those are kind of the forces that are at play here so let's take a look let's subtract this out let's make the difference or change so let's say let's say change let's call it change i shouldn't change and this will be equal to this minus this and i'll just copy that down we could add some decimals but i'll copy it down so now you can see the change that is happening as we go down all right let's let's make this a little bit smaller i'm going to make this black and white let's try to graph this out on a year by year basis let's i'm going to make this blue and bordered before we do that it's just take don't get ahead of yourself you're getting ahead of yourself i hate waiting for myself i'm so slow i'm so slow it's okay all right are you ready self we're going forward now we're going forward i got the j column j let's make that a skinny we're gonna go on column f home tab paintbrush and make that a skinny j and then we'll we'll try to we'll try to graph this out thusly so I'm going to say here, let's do our normal kind of calculation for a bond if I was to break out the payments. So I'm going to, I'm going to put the total here this time so we could see the total. And typically we would do something like 0, 1, 2. I'd bring that out to 30. I'm going to select those two. I'm going to bring it on out to 30 periods on out into the future. 30 years have gone by. And we're going to say home tab stuff's just the same nothing's changed here we go we're going to say black and white and black and white <clears throat> and then this is going to be the bond interest bond interest and the face amount in terms of cash flows we've seen this in prior presentations so in terms of cash flows we've got the 100 dollars that's happening repeatedly repetitively from an annuity standpoint in an annuity kind of basis I'm just gonna say equals the one before it and copy that one on out to the right. Copy it on out, boom. So that happens. And then we get the one lump sum payment that happens all the way out 30 years from now. We're gonna get $1,000, which will be worth like a penny by that point, given the inflation, given the poor caretaking of, of the money supply that's currently in place. All right, don't. I'm not complaining about the about the money supply here. This is not your job right now. It's just ridiculous though. I'm telling you, it's just ridiculous. I'm gonna put zeros here. Okay, we're not doing the money supply. We're not doing that. We're doing a bond. So we're gonna say this is gonna be the total then. So the total cash flow, I'll sum these up equals the sum of these two we'll copy that across copy that across and so there we got that lump sum at the end let's put an underline on on all of these ones let's put an underline there so we could see it i'm going to make these a little skinnier too <clears throat> skinnier let's make them thinner so there we go something like that okay so then we're gonna so then we could take you know the cash flow 
uh, or the present value. So the, right, the present value of the cash flow, which would look something like this, negative present value, shift nine. The rate would be over here at the 9.5. I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard, so that doesn't move when I copy it across, comma. The number of periods is gonna be, I'm gonna be picking up the one this time, comma, comma, and I'm just taking that $100 and present valuing it back to the current time period and enter. So we get the 91. I think everything works out there. I'm gonna copy that all the way across like so. And so, so there we have it. Let's go ahead and sum this up equals the sum here. And we're gonna get our sum all the way across of the one. So there's that same calculation of the 1049. Let's put, let's bring the totals all the way up this way too. I'll total it up that way. So we, we've got, <clears throat> we're gonna receive uh, 3000 in interest, the face amount 1000 at the end for a 4000 cash flow, but present valuing it, we get to the discounting at that 9.5, we get to the 1049. So now let's do this again, but in such a way so that we can we can see what ha what would happen if we bought the bond a year from now and two years from now and so on. So we'll get a little bit more complex. This is great practice for your Excel tables and formatting and, and stuff. So let's put let's make this blue and borders. You're getting ahead of yourself. Stop getting so excited about this stuff. This is gonna be great. Okay, so we're gonna have the year here. And then I'm going to say this is the price. And then I'm going to put my years here again. One or zero, one, two. I'm going to select those three. I'm going to bring it out to 30 again. So we're going to bring that out to 30 again. I'm going to go to the home tab. Let's center that. Let's make it black and white for the header. Let's make these two black and white like so. And then I'll bring the years on down this way too. So this is where it's getting tricky. It's like, this is different than what we did last time. It's got to start at zero, one, two. Then we'll select those three. We'll bring that down 30 years. 30 years later. 30 years later. Center it. Make that black and white. So there we have it. So now we're going to do our calculation here uh, in uh, period one. We're going to do a similar calculation, but I want to do it in such a way that I can copy it down. And I'm going to be focusing when I do this on this line again, the cash flow line. So I'll make that yellow up top. I'll make that a different co color so we can focus on it. So we're going to do the same calculation we had up here down below, but we want to do it in such a way that I can not only copy it to the right, but also down. So we're going to throw in a bit of a twist here. So this is going to be negative present value shift nine. We're going to go to the left and pick up that 9.5 F4 in the keyboard, making an absolute. That's the same because I want to be able to it not to move when I go right or down. And then comma, this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm not just going to pick up the number of periods with the one that works when I copy it to the right, but I want to be able to copy it down as well. So I'm going to pick up the one minus the zero and that still comes out to one. When I copy it to the right, I want it to be two minus zero, three minus zero. And then I also want to be able to copy it down. So this one right here, which is the one, I want it to be flexible to move to the right, but I don't want it to move down. Therefore, the numbers, I need a dollar sign in front of dollar sign in front of the seven. That's called a mixed reference. This one over here, I don't want it to move to the right. Therefore, I have to freeze it from going to the right. So I need to put a dollar sign before the letter. I do want it to move down. Therefore, no dollar sign before the eight. So mixed references in place. And then I'm going to say comma. I don't have a payment because... Uh, we're talking no payment here because it's it's not an annuity. And another comma, I'm going to pick up that same $100 here. I want that to move to the right when I go to the right. So I don't want to put anything uh, messing up the N, but I do not want it to move down when I copy it down. Therefore, dollar sign before the four, that's a mixed reference and then close that up. Now, if I did that right, I should be able to copy it to the right like so. And then I should be able to copy it down and get that same 91. Now, no, you could do this like like you could do this in a little bit of a tricky kind of way or another way that might be a little bit easier. Like you could say, if I already calculated it up here, 
I could copy that across and then I can copy the pattern this way by starting here and then copying that pattern to the right that way. That's another way uh, that you can do it. So, but we're gonna do it with the, with the formulas and the cells here because that's a little bit more fancy. So let's copy this to the right now. So I'm gonna copy that to the right. So there we have it. And so same numbers, I could copy it down now like this, copy it down and just double check it. So if I check it out, if I delete this, this one, cause now I'm gonna imagine we start in on the second year and we go for 29 years up until we get to the end. Let's check our totals here. If I sum this up equals the sum of these items, we're gonna sum this up. We get to the total of that looks right. And then if I copy that down, if I copy that down, I think that's still right. If I copy it down again, let's do it again. Cause there's not a big change. I'm gonna copy it down like so, and then delete that 100 and copy this down. So now we should come down to the 1098, right? Which is this one. So I'm just gonna copy this down and then I gotta delete this cell so we can see this kind of pattern that will, that will happen. So let's copy this all the way down for 30 periods. So we'll copy it down. I'm gonna go too far and then I'll delete some of it. And then go all the way down here. I didn't go too far. Let's go two more down, two more down. Boom, like so. And then I'm just gonna delete. This is a bit of a tedious process. So I'm just gonna delete everything that's under the 91s. So I'm gonna start deleting. I'll just do it this way. I'll delete here, delete here, delete here, delete here, delete here, delete here, delete there. And then I'll delete all this stuff from here down, boom. And then I'll do it over here. We're just, everything under the 91s, I'm gonna delete these i'm gonna delete these 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 and then i'll delete everything underneath here boom and then everything under the 91s from here here just trim it down just give us a little haircut on the bottom here. It's getting a little shaggy down there. Get rid of the shag. I want a cool little triangle thing happening. So there we've got it. So I'm gonna delete this last bit here and then I'll copy it down this way. Copy our totals down. Copy the totals down like so. And so there we have, so there, so there we have it. That last one is gonna be a thousand and that formula is a little little messy we'll keep it we'll just put it at a thousand so it matches our table on the left here right so that matches out hold on i shouldn't have done that i'm going to undo that so that's the 1005 so there's the 1005 and the last bit should be a thousand should be a thousand on the last bit so we'll just put a thousand i'll put a thousand on the last one just to match it out here to tie it out so there we go so i think this match it out to what we've got here so now we can see it on a a stream basis so now we've broken out you know our cash flows if we started in the first period and then if we started in period two period three period four on out to the 30 periods okay let's go ahead and make this this blue and bordered blue and bordered this fancy table border blue that one so i'm going to go border blue and then let's insert our graph here so we'll insert let's use this to insert the graph so i'm going to select these two right here i'm going to select these two and we're going to go then to the insert and we're going to go to a charts and i like the line graph because i want to be picking my x and y axes so i'm going to say that's the one and let's put it over here in inside here in such a way that it doesn't that it doesn't mess anything up so we'll bring it out a bit like right there maybe and then i'm going to get rid of the header and i'm going to put the labels i'm going to hit the plus button axis labels so we want then this axis to be the price so i'm going to say this is going to be equal 
So you put your cursor right on it and just say equals and it'll put a little equals up top. So you can see there's the equals happening and then we'll pick up the price, which I could pick up. Let's do it over here though. Let's pick up that price right there. You can see it formatting up top. And then we're gonna say down here, we're gonna say this axis equals. So you can see the equal sign. And then we're gonna pick up the year, enter. So now we have that. And then I can I can adjust this. Let's stop it at 30 because it's not going past 30. So I'm gonna, and you also might wanna check your data, by the way. I usually like checking my data by going to the select item and saying, okay, where's the data coming from? Here's my data series. If I edit it, it's taking the X axis, which is the years, that looks good. The Y axis is the price. So that looks right. So I'm gonna say, okay, okay. And then maybe adjust this down here. I'm gonna double click on it. And we've got the, the items here. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna stop it at 30 for the maximum. Let's stop it at 30, tab. So it gives us a little bit wider of a chart and let's make the intervals. I think we've been making them two instead of five. Let's make the intervals two just to switch it up. And so there we have it and we'll say close that out. So I think that looks pretty good. So now we can see we've graphed the three charts, right? We've graphed it in terms of one, a situation where we only have that end balance that we're gonna get at maturity just the face amount at maturity without the interest payments, like a zero coupon bond, for example. And then here we calculated an annuity, kind of what the graph would look like. And then here we have those two things kind of combined here with the bond, which has an annuity component to it and that uh, value of one at the end. And of course, then you can adjust your rates if you so choose. So if you wanted to make right here, we've got the market rate less than the rate. So you could, you could make it at like, 15 percent so now the market rate is higher than uh the coupon rate the rate on the bond and you've got something that looks like this you could then adjust these on your prior to look at the components of it as well and so if you made this out to be 15 15 then it would look something like this and if you made this one out to be 15 then it would look something like this and you can kind of uh, get a get a feel for what is going on with them so you can then adjust it down below what if it was like two or something like way down here and then you could adjust the rate so now it's looking more like this and you can kind of compare that and com and adjust your rate over here and try to get a feel for basically what's going on with those two kind of components happening which are kind of working in opposite to each other, one being that lump sum payment at the end, the other basically being an annuity stream when you're considering the cash flow and the valuation of the bond. Okay, let's go back on over. We'll bring it back. Let's bring it back to the 9.5 across the board. So we'll say 9.5. You can also, of course, adjust other factors as well if you want to try to calculate, adjust the coupon rate and so on once you've got the tables you know uh it's put into place let's put it back at the 9.5 for now though don't mess it up don't mess it up but play with it but you can play with it but don't mess it up because i don't want it to be messed up let's put a border and blue around let's put that bordered and let's do a spell check on it quick spell check okay looks good 